Okay, now let's take an example problem and see how the steepest descent method actually works. So here is a two variable problem, uh, which is a function of x and y, which is 4x squared minus 4xy plus 2y squared. And that is what we want to minimize. And let's say we have a starting iteration. We wanted to start at x vector x0, which is given by 2. And how do we come up with this? As I mentioned in the previous class, the starting or the first initialization of the vector that we are going to iterate upon to arrive at the optimal solution is essentially randomly generated. So if you know the bound, for example, if this problem is, for with this problem, is, let's say, if the x was bounded between minus 15 to let's say 20, and then let's say the y was bounded between 50 to minus 50, right? What we do is we generate a random number for x, which lies between minus 50 and 20. So let's say that random number generator gave us two. And then we take another random number generator and we generated a value of y between minus 50 and 50. And let's say that came out to be three. Then we can, you know, club them together. And this is something that we randomly generated, which is basically being used right here. Okay. So, uh, you know, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be randomly initializing in actual practical implementation. But just for you know continuing purposes, let's assume after random number generation, our x0 came out to be 2, 3. Then how this algorithm works, let's see the couple of steps. Again, the same steps will be there even if you have a different numbers in the starting iteration with respect to x0. So let's see how the actual steps of the algorithm works uh, for you. Okay. So what we do uh, is, okay, from this vector, we can transpose this, right? Remember what we is needed for this algorithm to work is we need this delta fxy, which is basically, uh, you know, clubbing together both the derivatives with respect to del x and del y, the function derivative with respect to del x and del y okay. that is agglomerated together. And what is this? This is the direction of the steepest ascent. That's what we need to find first. And we will subtract that to find the direction of the steepest descent in a little bit. Okay. So what essentially is needed is for us to use is this one. So what we will do in order to get this is we will take this function fxy, which is right here, and take a derivative of this function with respect to del x, right? If I do that, you can see this will be 8x minus 4y. So you will see you will get 8x minus 4y. Similarly, we need to get the second component of this vector, which is the derivative of the function uh, with respect to del y. So if I take this function and take a derivative of that function with respect to del y, then we will have minus 4x plus 4y, which has been listed here, okay? Now, what we need to do is since we have x0 is 2, 3, we need to evaluate this delta fx at 2, 3. Remember, in the surface that we had, right? Like if we had a surface like this, Right? If we had a point like there, we are evaluating the delta at that lo specific location, right? So whatever is the value of x here, we are evaluating the value of the derivative function at that location. And since our starting iteration is x0, which is 2, 3, we need to evaluate the value of the delta fxy at 2, 0. So what, in order to do this, what we'll do is we have this equation, 8x minus 4y, we will substitute x equal to 2 and y equal to 3 in this equation, and that will give me delta fx 2, 3. So again, so if we do that, we will essentially have the equation that we have written in the right hand side. So that will be equal to 4, 4. So from there, what we have done, we have found out the direction of the steepest ascent. But then we can take our iterative formula, which is x, vector x k plus 1 is equal to vector x k minus alpha delta fx. And we can use that to find out my x1. So what I will do here is I will set up k equal to 0. If I say k up equal to 0, then this equation, what is the equation here? This equation essentially becomes vector x1 is equal to vector x0 minus alpha delta f x0. Okay, so this is what we will do 
where will help me to get the value of the vector x1 in iteration 1 from a starting iteration x0 that we have. So we have determined this delta fx2, we will reuse here and that's how we'll proceed. Okay, so how it's going to look like? Our del x0 is 2 by 3, this is 2, 3 minus alpha 4, 4 which is coming from right here and then from there we'll get this value which is 2 minus 4 alpha 3 minus 4 alpha. So that should be the x1 value that we should be getting. Okay, now what is alpha? Now this alpha has to be, you know, fixed, right? Or th there has to be a value of alpha that needs to be used, right? So let's see what happens to do this formulation depending upon the value that we have, okay? So here we are assuming at least for this iterative run that, you know, our alpha is fixed and it is equal to 0.5. And you can assume different values like 0.1, 1, 0.4, and you have to try out different values and different values will lead to faster or slower convergence because it's a step size. Sometimes you might be moving forward uh, very fast. If you move too fast, then you might skip the optima in certain stages. So you need to be mindful of what you're using and that's why you have to try out different value. But let us assume that the learning rate or the alpha, uh, at least for the problem that we are discussing here, has a value of 0.5. If that's the case, I can substitute that 0.5 in my previous equation, which was 4 alpha, 4 alpha, and then I can simplify this, and from there I can get, in the first iteration, the value of x1 will come out to be 0, 1. So what we have done is we have started with essentially, right, 2, 3, right, and this was x0, from there, in an iterative fashion, we have moved to x1, vector x1, which is 0, 1, right? And this is essentially mimicking the move from x0 to x1 vector that we have in the landscape of the optimization that we have. Let's carry on the step two for the same problem and see how can we move from x1 and how can we get the value of x2, right? So x2 equation could be also used, right? So if I use an index of k equal to one, then your overall equation that we had will become x2 is equal to x1 minus alpha delta fx12, right? So this is the equation that we can use and that's what we are going to do. And from the, in order for us to use this equation, first thing that I need to do is I need to evaluate my derivative function at x1 location. Okay, so here we will evaluate the derivative function and how do we do that? We can see the derivative function is 8x minus 4y, 4 minus 4x, 4y, and in place of x and y, now we are going to substitute the current value of x1, which is 0, 1. So we'll substitute x equal to 0, y equal to 1 in the derivative equation, and from there I will get 8 times 0 minus 4 times 1, and then minus 4 times 0 plus 4 times 1, and this will come out to be minus 4, 4, okay? So that gives me the derivative information, and then, you know, I can use the equation that I've written here, okay? And remember, this will change. Now this is x1, so now no more is 2, 3. Now this will be this, x1. So this will be 0, 1 minus, if you fix the alpha to be 0.5 for this overall problem, then we can take this one and agglomerate that information, and from there we'll find that the x2 come out to be 2, 1. So what we have done now, in the next step, right, when we have moved to computing x2, right, this x2 became 2, 1, right? So now this is a, you know, first iteration, and this is the second iteration that we have done. In the first iteration we reached here, second iteration we reached here, and we will keep doing this iterative loop till we reach the stopping criteria. And this is the criteria that actually we discussed in the last class, right? Uh, if we satisfy the stopping criteria, we will not do further iteration. If we do not satisfy the stopping criteria, we will be doing the iterations going forward. So we'll move on from x2 to x3, x4, and x five and so on, until and unless we have reached the stopping criteria for our problem. So what is the stopping criteria that is used? In fact, we can use exactly the same stopping criteria that we used, one of the stopping criteria that we can use is what we used in newton raphson method, right? Uh, but remember, the stopping criteria there was for a single variable. 
what you need to do is you need to modify this stopping criteria by just putting a vector. So we need to make this quantity a vector, this quantity a vector, subtract that, take a, you know, absolute value of that. And if that is less than epsilon, which is the threshold, then we will ask our algorithms to stop. Okay. So this is how the second component of any optimization algorithm that comes into picture, which is the stopping criteria that will be used to stop the algorithm. So until and unless this stopping criteria is satisfied, we will be doing iterative loops, moving on from x1 to x2 to x3, x4, and so on, until we have reached this criteria. Okay, and this criteria essentially should be selected in a such a way that we have really reached to the you know, optimum location for that function. So let's move on and also try to cover the second important algorithm for this class, which is Newton's method, which is essentially a modification of uh, the newton raphson method that we discussed in the last class for a multiple variable problem. 